Ask the Messengers, the program that deals with substance abuse, real people telling real stories. Hosted by Pastor Lester Lewis, co-host Charlize Wilkerson and Leroy Carey. Produced by David Humphreys. Where there is addiction, there is a chance for recovery. We're trying to help save lives on Ask the Messengers. Welcome to Ask the Messengers. My name is Pastor Lester Lewis, and I am your proud host for this show. Listen, we absolutely want you to know that on Ask the Messengers, this show is about real people, real struggles, but more importantly, about real deliverance and how God is able to set those free. The Bible says, whom the Son set free is free indeed. And so today we're going to be just talking uh, with a few people and uh, sharing their testimonies and their stories. One of the things that I love about God is that he's able to take the mess that we may find ourselves in and turn them into a message, uh, something that will help others, something that will encourage others. And, and so uh, just because you've been through some things does not mean that God is through with you. Uh, it simply means that now God can use you to share a relevant message. And so Ask the Messengers is really all about uh, helping someone. Maybe you're there. Maybe you're struggling. Maybe you got some issues with uh, with addictions and God wants to, to share a word with you today. Or perhaps you have someone in your family that you know and they need to hear this word. Uh, and so how do I get started? Where do I help them? How do I how do I even get them to a place of help? Uh, and so today we're going to share some information that will bless you. But listen, before we do that, we're going to go. I want to share. We, we're going to share this testimony with you of someone who's been through and, and just listen to their story right here. My drug of choice was heroin and crack. I was 29 when I first started using. Well, it distant. It affected my family by me leaving the family for 16 years. Um, I didn't have any contact with them because of my shame and my guilt. The first time that I got clean, it allowed me to get 10 years, and I hid my addiction by working in the field of addiction. I was a case manager. And um, so it was really easy for me to hide my addiction because as a case manager, it allowed me to um, appear to identify with um, clients. One of the frightening experiences that I had as a case manager, I, I worked in a prison system and I relapsed. And one of the frightening experiences was not now on heroin as I was interviewing an inmate in the career. All right, listen, uh, today I have with me someone who is a, a, a just a, a wealth of information and knowledge and just an all around great brother. Uh, he's going to be co-hosting with me today. Uh, I want to introduce to you guys uh, Mr. Leroy Carey. Leroy, how are you today, sir? I'm doing uh, fine, Pastor Lewis. It's good seeing you. Uh, we are going to talk about today, I'm really excited about the program. We're, we're going to talk today about making amends and also apologizing for some of the horrible things uh, that people think we've done in addiction. Hmm. And on the show today, we are going to have Joyce, who has uh, many years in the recovery community, and also Emerson, who has many years in the recovery community. And uh, we're just excited about, about having our guests on. And let's get started, Pastor All right. Lewis. Welcome to the show, guys. It is, it is exciting. It is exciting. I can see it on your face. I can see that you guys are ready to get, to, to get right into this thing. Come on, let's, let's just talk, Leroy. Just, let's, just, let's just get into the questions and, and get into the meat of this thing. You know, you know we're going to start uh, really, you know, in, in the community, we made a lot of uh, people angry with us uh, through our drug usage. And uh, we're here today to let you know that we are much better now. So we'd like to first ask Joyce, uh, Joyce, what was your drug of choice? My drug of choice was crack cocaine. Okay, Emerson, what was yours? My drug of choice was crack cocaine as well. Okay, what age did you start, Emerson? I started crack cocaine at the age of 22. At 22, you Joyce? Uh, I think I was 19. 
Okay. All right. Now, in your in your in your starting, did, what was it? Was it something that you did just socially, or, or did, did someone lead you into it, or was it just something that you just tried as a uh, just just as an experiment? Uh, that's for yeah, me. Yes, me. Joyce. Well, course. for me, I started actually using any kind of drugs at the age of nine years old. Right. Recreational, it was, and it led me down a dark road as the years went by. You know. Mm -hmm. So that's what I thought. I had it together. You know, it was something to do. Everybody else was doing it. So I decided to do one dab. And, you know, and it took me somewhere that uh, I really, really, really didn't want to be. Okay. Emerson, uh, share with us, uh, what made you start using in the first place? Honestly, what made me start using in the first place, as I really look at it now and reflect back, it was because I was trying to cover up feelings. But, you know, from the beginning, I was the dope man to the door man to the door mat. And, you know, it was the ride, 747 ride was beautiful going up, but the crash landing was devastating. Yeah. So I would have to say that uh, I used uh, to cover up a lot of feelings, though, and a curiosity because I wondered uh -huh. why these people, you know, sold their clothes, jewelry and, you know, weapons. And, you know, why did women leave their children and, you know, people got incarcerated and I, this little bitty dot can make somebody do that. And I didn't think nothing could take me until I ran into crack. But the grace of God, Come the on, bring man. of salvation, have appeared to all men, teaches us the nine ungodliness and worldly lust that we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Okay, thank similar. you. Thank you, right, Emerson. Yes, thank right. you. All right. uh, listen, Joyce. Yes. How did this uh, have a real effect on the relationship with your family? Wow. Um, it tore my family up. Uh, I was the person, you know, I had got so bad to where I gave the kids away. I birthed six kids. I gave them all away. I couldn't go. I stole from my mom. I couldn't go to my family's house. You know what I mean? It had got just so bad to me to where my mom called. Every time she seen me, she used to say, Lord, have mercy. I thought that was my name for a minute, you know, because every time she seen me, that's what she said. But this have took me to almost, I've been left for dead. You know, I... It took me to a bottom to where I really can't even describe that I never thought to a darkness, to the darkest place that I have never seen in my life. And I will want to never see it again. But only by his grace and mercy. Hmm. He chose me, the one that ate out the garbage can. I mean, I'm talking about these dark nights when I had to eat out the garbage can, when I walked the streets at night to get that next fix. Hmm. You know what I mean? I'm talking about dark, you know, the, not knowing where your kids are. You know, it took me a, it took me to a really really dark place. That's tell me, it. tell me uh, the the frightening experience of that that you got when uh, I mean, tell us about when you were left for dead. Um, woke up a morning, wanted to get high, and us as women, we have a whole bunch of options to get high. And I went out, I jumped in a car, I put a ski mask. The man put a mask on my head, put a gun to my head. And all I can remember is driving. And when I did, the car did stop. I was inside of a garage, and it was like 12 men. And they raped me, and the other one tried to do something that I was not going to let them do. I said, you might as well kill me. They put the mask back on, and they kicked me out on the freeway naked. And I was scarred up, and a man picked me up. God sent the angel for me, picked me up. But check this one out. I didn't stop then. I had him. He gave me twenty dollars, and I went back to the to the drug house. Emerson, I, Emerson, tell me a frightening experience, uh, right quick. A frightening experience was for me when uh, my mother. I gave her twelve hundred when I worked for the Board of Education, and I told her don't give it back, and I and she vowed. I told her not to give it back, and and then in the end, I was at the door at two in the morning, knocking on the door, and she said, "Get off the porch before I call the police. You're shaming the family." And I did, "Give me the money! Give me the money! Give me the money!" It was frightening because I didn't know she was going to jail. That I was going to go to jail whether she called the police. And I was craving these urges was taking over me, and I wasn't raised like that. Come from a good family.
family, though, uh, with morals and ethics, but the drugs had changed me into somebody I did not want to be. I was Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, and that was very frightening because I didn't know nobody, and I didn't know who I was, though. Only into this recovery community that I identified and found out that I found a stranger, and that stranger was me. Okay, thank you, Emerson. Wow. I'll turn it back over to Pastor Lewis. Man, oh, this, listen, this, this, this conversation is, is going, I mean, there's some things being revealed, and I mean, thank you so much for you guys for your openness, and, and listen, we got so much more. Uh, we want to hear more of your stories. We want to hear more of what God is able to do. Stay tuned for more of Ask the Messengers. I'm Artesia Washington, and I'd like to welcome you to Irvine Head Injury, where restoring you to your previous level of functioning is our goal. We offer services such as physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech and language pathology, aquatic therapy, massage therapy, and counseling. An automobile accident is an unfortunate event. If you feel that you or a loved one can benefit from our services, you can be reached at 248-415-2500. We look forward to hearing from you. Thank you for tuning in to Ask the Messengers. We need your financial support to keep this program on the air. Would you please send your tax-deductible donation to Greater Love Christian Center? Attention, Ask the Messengers. 18400 Schaefer Highway, Detroit, Michigan, 48235. And for online donations, please visit our website at www dot ask the messengers dot com we'll be right back with more of ask the messengers god's world a detroit institution at west seven mile in Schaefer says get them while they last the obama's 2017 commemorative calendar is going fast get your church supplies communion cups pine envelopes bibles inspirational books by top authors Call in your orders at 313-862-8220. Shop online at godsworldsuperstore.org. God's World, for all your inspirational needs. The advice that I would give to someone would be to ask for help. Um, behind my relapses, the shame and the guilt caused me to stay out there a little longer, and it because I was so ashamed that I was using again. It took me to jail at 53. It, it brought me to my knees that I had lost my home, my cars. I found myself living in the basement apartment in a room with my partner living on a, a twin-size bed. What I would suggest is you ask for help. Don't keep getting high to medicate how you're feeling or the shame or the guilt that you may have. Ask for help. Just tell somebody that you need to get some help. And help is here. Welcome back to Ask the Messengers. We are back, and, and listen, we're having a great conversation. Uh, my co-host, uh, Brother Leroy Carey, is here. And Leroy, man, I'm telling you, these, 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 these inspirational uh, uh, testimonies that are, are being shared today is absolutely out of this world. And so, uh, listen, we're just talking to real people, telling their real stories. And uh, Brother Leroy, can you, can you just, uh, how, how, how is this making you, I know that you've been, you hear this all the time, but, but I'm sure that every time you hear these stories, they move you, man. You know, you know the, to be uh, real about this whole thing, Pastor Lewis, when you get into the recovery community, those stories are not unusual, uh, right. but yet and still, they still affect you in such a way that, uh, you know, we did a lot of harm, not only to ourselves, but to our community, uh, to our families. Uh, we, we did a lot of harm. And, you know, and, and right, right away, I wanted to ask uh, Emerson, uh, Emerson, if you had someone you wanted to apologize to right now on this spot, would you do that right now? Yes, I would, Leroy. Mm. I would apologize to my father. Uh, 
You know, I was raised with morals and ethics, as I stated before. My parents were married 38 years, and, uh, you know, uh, I had got on this downward spiral and got incarcerated. And in the process of being incarcerated, I lost my father in prison. And that was an anchor on me. And I'd like to, you know, apologize to my father, you know, because, you know, I can remember him taking me to White Castles over a two or three day binge in a drunken stupor, you know, where I was out on the streets and he would pick me up and, you know, find me at four in the morning and so forth and take me to get coffee and sit me down and talk to me and, you know, and, and try to get me on straight street, you know, and, and I just disappointed him, you know, but now, you know, God has favored me and he's rectified, you know, that. And I know he's smiling on me, you know, but I want to, you know, that was a deep pit in my heart. You know, when they, I was on the yard and they called me, you know, my number and, mm -hmm. and then they called me in the office and let me go to the control station. And, and my mother told me that your father passed. He's in a better place now. Get your life together, Alan. We'll be up there to see you next week. Get it together. You know, and I was crushed. You know, but uh, I know he's happy and grateful for me now. I just graduated with my master's degree at Wayne right. State. Uh, right. You know, I went from helpless, hopeless uses and loss to have a meaning and purpose in life. I've been rescued from insanity, depravity, and death. God has favored me and brought me out of a horrible Th pit. Thank you yeah. so much, Emerson. Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you. you know, I, I, you know, Joyce, you've been through quite a bit. You, you really shared some inspirational stuff with us, right, uh, about the rapes and the uh, uh, supposedly almost dying. Could you, if you needed to apologize to somebody right now, would you do that? Yes, yes, I can do that, Leroy. Uh, I wanna apologize to my son that a 16 year old murdered and I was not able to show him to be the mother that I can be that I'm being today. I want to apologize to my 24-year-old son that's in a wheelchair that just got shot two years ago that I just had to put into a psych ward because he's about to lose his mind and tell him I'm sorry that I was not there. You know what I mean? I want to apologize to myself because I'm still to this day beating myself up. You know, it's ironic. I got here, Leroy. I appreciate you so, so, so much, Leroy, for helping me come through so much. You know, and I'm just going through something right now, and I guess this is where God wanted me to be. You know, so, and for the rest of the people that I have harmed, that I don't even realize that I have harmed, I want to make amends to you guys, to my mom for stealing your money, you know, to all my children that I left. You know, I can't take back my past, but all mama can do right now is go to the future, and that's what I'm trying to do to the best of my ability. All right. Leroy, I, I just hear, you know, we I, I, when we started, when, when you started, I'm sure you, you thought that it was the, the drug or, uh, or was making you feel good. It, you thought that it was making you feel good. Yeah. But obviously, at the end, you see how much hurt and how much pain it caused. Uh, I mean that that I think that is in and of itself as we're looking at these the lies and their, their message is, is, is that's the one thing that the enemy will try to make you think that something will feel good but mm -hmm. in actuality it's causing pain yeah. yes yes it does Pastor Lewis you know I, I you know Joyce is like an inspiration uh, you know I, I, I sat up here and I started remembering things about myself uh, you know, I took my mother's pride, and I need to mm. apologize to her mm. for that. Uh, my my mother did not raise me to be a drug addict. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, through college and all of the things that I've been through through the Vietnam War and everything, uh, I I I've been clean almost 28 years yes. and my mother has not seen me clean a day in her life and she died mm. and never saw me clean and you know sometimes uh that bothers me especially with mother's day just passing right. uh that that kind of bothers me and you know i know it does the same for most people uh we we go through a lot of emotional upheaves you know, I really wanted to uh, to thank Emerson uh, for all the uh, honesty. Uh, Emerson, t 
tell us something right yeah, in a few words, Emerson. A few words. <laughs> that's, that, that's that master's degree. That's that master's, degree. <laughs> that's that master's yeah. <laughs> in a few words, Emerson. Tell us something that you would tell the uh, the community on how things are now. Oh wow, man! Uh, briefly for uh, the community that you could be, believe, and become. If you have the vision, go for it. God brought me from 105 Hobo Drive. Mm -hmm. To have my own place, a gated community, you know, uh, you know, he's blessed me uh, surmountably, though. He showed up. And unless it had been for the Lord on my side, my soul would have dwelt in silence. Trust God, finding for yourself. And, and Joyce, uh, on, on our closing, please uh, give, give the recovery community something that you could leave with them, but some hope. And how you doing now? Okay. On that note, I can really, really say God has truly blessed me. Even though my story may sound like it was just tremendously terrible, check, and I went through that to get to where I'm at. I'm a licensed foster mom. I have adopted four grandchildren. I have back relationship with all the children that I have gave away. I'm going now to fight and get guardianship of that 24-year-old I just told you about. And thank God that I have been drug-free 12 years. So for those that think that you can't get your kids back, I'm a witness right now that you can. Thank you, guys. All right. Listen, we'll be right back. We got more. We got final comments coming. Stay tuned. God's World, a Detroit institution at West 7 Mile in Schaefer says, get them while they last. The Obama's 2017 commemorative calendar is going fast. Get your church supplies, communion cups, pine envelopes, Bibles, inspirational books by top authors. Call in your orders at 313-862-8220. Shop online at godsworldsuperstore.org. God's World, for all your inspirational needs. I'm Artesia Washington, and I'd like to welcome you to Irvine Head Injury, where restoring you to your previous level of functioning is our goal. We offer services such as physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech and language pathology, aquatic therapy, massage therapy, and counseling. An automobile accident is an unfortunate event. If you feel that you or a loved one can benefit from our services, you can be reached at 248-415-2500. We look forward to hearing from you. We're back. Ask the Messengers right here. Uh, listen, we've had a great show. Uh, this has been so uh, informative and so such a blessing and, and I, more inspirational than anything else. Uh, Brother Leroy, we have, and you know, we've we worked together and, and we sat, we've talked about, about life issues and things. And, and man, this is just, you know, that I believe that, that at some point my, 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 my religion needs to meet my reality. Uh, and if, if I really and if I really believe that God is able, uh, then I ought to be able to see I can point back to some things that he has done. And I believe that Joyce and, uh, and, 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 and Emerson, they, they share some things, man, that they can point back and say, this is what God did. And, uh, man, I, I just thank God for their message that they gave us today. Amen. Yeah. yeah. See, you, you know, Pastor Lewis is only through the grace of God and, and his mercy that uh, we stand here today. Uh, we are we are just so grateful, not only to God, but to people in the recovery community that has helped us. Uh, we we thank you. Uh, we thank this station for having us. Uh, we we are really overwhelmed. Uh, I was overwhelmed a little bit by Joyce's story, uh, but it's it's not unusual. So you know, I am just really grateful to God. Uh, that he put me in a position to to do what I'm doing today, you know. So I am. Uh, I, I I really don't know what to say. You know, ask the messenger is just what it says. Ask the messengers. So I I am just grateful that I had an opportunity to be even involved uh, with the recovery community and had the opportunity to meet Emerson yeah. and Joyce yeah. along the way. Yeah. And again, you, we talked about today about, about, about making amends and, 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 and just uh, apologizing for some of the actions. Uh, I always say to people, you know, uh, don't say I'm sorry. 
because sorry is a state of being, but you apologize and take responsibility for those things. And, and, and those things will, and as you're doing that, you are, you are helping them to understand that, that you are indeed uh, letting them know, uh, I, I truly am sorrowful for what I have done. Amen. All right, listen, today we are, again, we're, we're, we're so thankful for all those who are on the, the panel today. And, and certainly we thank God for you for viewing. Uh, and, and listen, ask the messengers. Uh, listen, we, this is a show that we, we, we do our very best to, to bring to you all that the, the information and all that the, the, the revelation of the lives of people who've been through addiction. Uh, but listen, we also need your help. We, we're, we, 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 we just pray that you would consider in your heart that you would sow a seed into this ministry. That's what it is. It is a ministry helping people. Uh, the information is on the screen. Uh, you can go online. You can, you, can, you can put it in the snail mail, whichever way you choose. However God touches your heart, uh, but, but so because, we, because if, this moment, if this show has blessed you, then be a blessing back to the show. All right. And so we want you to know that uh, there's a, just a brief thing I just want to share with you uh, in the in the scriptures, the Bible, the, the, the Lord Jesus did something so wonderful. Uh, there was a man who was sitting at the pool of Bethesda and he was there. He kept for 38 years. He every, every year he go back to try to get healed. The angel would stir up the water. Whoever went in first, uh, that person would be the person that would be healed. And so for 38 years, he came back every year, every, he kept trying, he kept trying, he didn't give up, he kept trying, he kept coming, but the Bible says whenever he got just before he would get there, somebody else would get in there before him. And, and so he had to go back and spend a whole nother year in his struggle. Uh, listen, I want you to know and hear this. No matter where you are, no matter what circumstance, maybe you're struggling. Maybe, maybe it's been years. Maybe it's been months. Maybe it's been minutes. Uh, but please know uh, there, is a, there, there is a silver lining in that story. The Bible says of all the people who were sitting around that pool, guess who showed up? Jesus. And guess who he saw? The man who had been struggling for 38 years. And he said to him, he asked him a question. Do you want to be made whole? That's the question. Do you want to be made whole? Do you want to get out of what you're in? Do you want to get beyond what you're doing? Do you want to? And because it, and so the Bible simply says he made he said, well, somebody gets in before me. I have no one to help me. And listen, that wasn't the question. The question is, do you want to be made whole? And so Jesus, the Bible says, healed this man. And all I want you to know is this, is that you don't have to earn it, nor deserve it, nor uh, have the credentials for it. All you have to do is want it. And if you want it, he can provide it for you. Let's pray uh, so that we can end this in this conversation uh, with God having the final word. Father, we thank you so much for your son, Jesus. We thank you for his finished work on the cross. And Lord, we know that is in, in Jesus we live, move and have our being right now. Father, we pray that your angels of protection would move out to those who are struggling with addictions. Draw them back to yourself. Draw them to your spirit. Draw them to the place of refuge and help. And Lord, we trust that you are able to do all things and do them well. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Thank you so much for watching Ask the Messengers. Listen, tune back in. We got more on the show coming real soon.